Coming up on Tuesday's Locked on Rams, the one guy who is going straight to the Hall of Fame who still is not getting enough credit. You are Locked on Rams, your daily Los Angeles Rams podcast. Part of the Locked on Podcast Network, your team every day. Thanks for making Locked on Rams your first listen every single day. Of course, you can find us free and available on all platforms. You know how to do it. You can find me on Twitter, at Travis Rogers. Of course, I host the Rams pregame, halftime, and postgame show along with Kirk Morrison. Since the Rams have come back to Los Angeles, appreciate you checking out the pod. Give us a rate. Give us a review. You know how all that stuff goes. You can find us on our YouTube channel as well, Locked on Rams. So make sure you're seeing us across everywhere you want to talk about the Los Angeles Rams. Okay, so let's start with this. The one guy that's going to the Hall of Fame that still doesn't get enough credit. Can you be the best player in the league? Can you be the best player at your position? Can you be just the best, period, maybe one of the best ever, and still not get enough credit? I think you can, because I think that's exactly what's happening with Aaron Donald. It is just extraordinary what he was able to do on Sunday against Tom Brady and the Tampa Bay Bucks. If you look at the stat sheet, it was a really good day right? He had a sack. He had a pass deflected. He had three more quarterback hits. He had five unassisted tackles. It was an impressive day on the stat sheet in and of itself. And it barely begins to describe what he was able to do in that game. He was the difference. We spent so much time on this pod during the, during the games, during the postgame shows, talking about everything that was going on in that game on the offensive side of the ball, how good Matthew Stafford was, the four turnovers, some of the coaching decisions by Sean McVay, that we kind of just went right past the job that Aaron Donald and his defense were able to do on Tom Brady. Let's just talk about the most obvious, simple thing, football 101, right? If I got to put two guys on one guy, that means one guy's coming in clean. Sometimes they put three guys on Aaron Donald. Sometimes they're literally three helmets on 99 trying to prevent him from doing what he does. And look, three guys, now I got two guys coming clear. You put him together with Vaughn Miller or Leonard Floyd or who are Greg Gaines or Sean Robinson or any of the other guys that he's in there with, now all of a sudden they're getting singled up. Now all of a sudden sometimes they're able to come free. It really is hard to talk about just how much of an impact he has on these things. You can talk about win rate. You can talk about sacks. You can talk about all of these things, and it doesn't begin to cover the impact that he has on a game. I am a football fan, right? I do the things that football fans do, which is I look at the ball. I look at the quarterback. I look where the ball is going. I Once in a while, we'll see you know how somebody is lined up or where somebody is doing, and you're looking at this matchup or that matchup. Do yourself a favor. Just pick a couple of plays in the NFC Championship game here and there when 99's on the field and just watch what he does. Watch how he goes about his business and watch the amount of tension that he draws from the opposing offense. This is the, the ultimate compliment, right? That all of my NFL buddies that have told me this, the red dot guy, right? It's one of my favorite terms. I'd be pretty, be pretty cool to be a red dot guy, right? When they're in the film room, coach takes the laser pointer, puts it on this guy on the wall and says, that guy right there, the guy with the red dot, the guy that I'm lighting up with the red dot, that's the guy that's going to determine whether or not we have success or not. If we don't deal with that guy on the red dot, we're in big trouble. Aaron Donald is the ultimate red dot guy. If you don't deal with 99, what do you do next? I don't know, because he's going to go in there and wreck everything it is you're trying to do. That's how good of a player he is. It frees up everybody else. Double teams are just kind of the norm with him. And he's still getting win after win after win. Don't just look at whether or not he's sacking Tom Brady or Jimmy Garoppolo or whoever the opposing quarterback might be. Look how often he's just a half a step short or he's making that guy move a half a second early from what he wants to do because he's back there. And it's not just one move. He wants to bully you, throw you back the way we've seen him do over and over and over again. We saw that Monday night game against the Cardinals earlier this year where he picked up Garcia from the Cardinals. And basically, he picked up a 300-pound man and threw him into the quarterback and knocked Kyler Murray over. Good luck defending that. He's also the fastest guy at his position. So you think he's just going to – he's going to – you're going to lock in. You're going to try to make sure that you are set and ready to go, and you're not going to let him steamroll you? Okay, cool. Now he's just going to run right past you because you're a step slow. 
That's the sort of thing that he does. He's got every move in the book. He's got all the handwork. I know we all remember that video that he put up a couple of years ago where his trainer had the knives out, right? And he's deflecting all the different knife blows that somebody's trying to get him. Thank goodness, rubber knives. Because, you know, I mean, everybody makes a mistake, I guess. I'd hate to see Aaron Donald open himself up on a knife drill. But you got to see the handwork. You got to see the footwork. You get to see everything it is that he does. And it is still not even the scratching of the surface of how good he is. Win rate this, win rate. Who can, Watch. Watch what he does. Watch how much attention he does. Watch how often he's the reason that something just doesn't work. What it does, too, is it lets the other guys. Look, the Rams secondary has been somewhere between okay and maybe a little bit less than that. There's a reason that Eric Weddle's on the team in the playoffs. Eric Weddle hadn't played football in two years, and now he's playing important snaps. I think that tells you what it is. Number one, they're banged up uh, with injuries. And number two, they haven't quite found the mix of guys that they probably would want. But when the quarterback's got a second and a half, two seconds tops to make a decision – you don't have to have four Jalen Ramseys back there. If you got one, which they do, and you got another guy in Darius Williams who's had a pretty good season or two, you're in pretty good shape because Aaron Donald's going to get home in enough time. It is just absolutely remarkable how often that ball needs to come out a little bit ahead of schedule because 99's right there. That's a big part of it, too. Here's the other thing. He is the baddest man in the league. If you lined up every guy and said, you have to fist fight somebody, he'd probably be the last guy you'd pick. He'd be the, because watch what happens, right? We saw it against Arizona. We've seen it a couple of times. He's not playing. He's not messing around. He's not going to let you do what you want to do to him. You're not going to be able to do, he's going to stand up for himself. And I love it. I love everything about it and the way that he goes about that. And that brings me to the next thing. Just the incredible amount of leadership that he brings, not just to the defense, but the team. When those, when, when those cannons go off, right, when the fire starts shooting in the air, when the Rams come out of the tunnel at SoFi Stadium, who is everybody looking at? They're looking at 99. They're looking at Aaron Donald. To, it's, it's the ultimate big brother thing, right? I got this guy with me. I'm feeling pretty good about myself because all I have to do is just be myself. He's going to do the extraordinary things. He's going to do the things that put guys into the Hall of Fame. That's another part of it. This is just an incredible amount of leadership, knowing that you have that guy on your team. If I just do my job, he's going to do the thing that pops the game open. It is an extraordinary ability that he has. Why do you think that Von Miller, who also is going to go to the Hall of Fame, all of a sudden just, boom, starts to look a lot like that Von Miller that we saw once he figured out the scheme that the Rams are He has six sacks in the last five games. Two reasons why. Number one, he's a great player too, obviously. The other thing is, Von Miller is, let me say it again, this is important. Von Miller is going to the Hall of Fame, and he's the second guy that you're worried about when you break that huddle. Where's 99? Okay, he's right there. We got him. We got him blocked up. We know schematically that we're going to do here. We're going to shift coverage to deal with 99. Okay, great. We got that. All right, now let's go to Von Miller. You think that's a coincidence that he's been going the way that he has in the last few games? Absolutely not. Aaron Donald is the reason that goes. And lastly, Um, and this is, I I don't know if he should start an agency. I don't know if this should be some sort of, um, usury situation that's going on, but he's making dudes money. I mean, if you play with him, you're going to get some numbers and you're going to get paid on those numbers. And I don't know if you chip him off two and a half percent, five percent, 10 percent, half of it. I don't know what it is, but he's made a lot of guys, a lot of money along the way. All right, coming up next, we've talked about the offense. We've talked about Aaron Donald. I want to talk about some of the unsung heroes from Sunday's game because there were a lot of guys that did a lot of great things, and they were a big part of the reason the Rams were able to do what they were able to do. But first, I want to tell you about my pals at Bet Online. It is a happy new year, right? A happy betting new year as well, and we are getting deep into the playoffs. It's the championship round. The Super Bowl is right around the corner, and Bet Online remains the number one spot for all the best sports wagering action for 2022. New year, new updated desktop and mobile websites, so sign up today. Get going, right? Get going, make some money, do your thing, and you will receive your 50% welcome bonus on your first deposit. Just use the promo code LOCKED ON to get started. They got football, basketball, hockey, boxing, UFC, right down to your favorite casino games. Eh, you know, who doesn't like Vegas casino games? I do. Don't wait to take advantage of all the amazing offers available for 2022. Bet online is the fastest and easiest way to wager on all your favorite sports. Bet online where the game starts. 
Let me thank you again for making Locked on Rams your first listen every single day. A big announcement. The Peacock and Williamson NFL Show podcast is going on the road to L.A. for Super Week. Looking forward to seeing everybody here. Follow the Peacock and Williamson NFL Show today to get the most comprehensive coverage of the big game. It's free and it is available on all platforms. Okay, so some of the guys that had big Sundays that were not Matthew Stafford, that were not Cam Akers, who put it on the ground a couple of times. It's not Aaron Donald or Vaughn Miller or Tom Brady or Mike Evans or any of the guys that was Jalen Ramsey that we've talked so much about. There were so many guys that had big moments in that game that we need to discuss. So let's start right here. How about Joe Nopu? Right? Joe Nopum was the guy that was drafted to take over for Andrew Whitworth a few years ago. Andrew Whitworth, when he came from Cincinnati to Los Angeles, was, hey, we can get a couple of years out of this guy. He's still a really good football player, but we need to start thinking about the future. And they draft Nopu. And he comes in, and Andrew Whitworth is still the man. And then the next year, you're thinking, okay, no, 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 no. Andrew Whitworth is still the man. And now here again, Andrew Whitworth is still your guy. No boom could have done a million different things that are not helpful for your team, that are not helpful for him. You could, you know, the, the playing time, all of, all of the things that we all know about, right? Instead, he goes to work. Instead, he learns how to play a little bit of guard. You can play left tackle if Andrew Whitworth is unavailable. He can go all the way to the other side and play right tackle if Rob Havenstein is unavailable. He's been a guy that you bring in in that jumbo package that we've seen happen uh, a handful of times, especially more and more later and later into the season when the Rams started to rely on the run game a little bit more than they had early in the season. He goes in and has to start a playoff game against a very good Tampa front four and not only holds his own, here's, I mean, you know the rule, right? How do you know when an offensive lineman has had a good game? You don't say his name. I don't think we said Joe Nopum's name other than, hey, good job, Joe Nopum. On Sunday afternoon, he was fantastic. He did exactly what the Rams needed to do. It gives Witt another chance to spend a week to get healthy and come back, hopefully. But it also just means that you have a very versatile, very good player available for you at that position and really can play four of the five offensive line positions in a pinch. Certainly he's a tackle probably by the time he's settled in in a starting role in the NFL, but has shown himself to be an incredibly useful guy and a guy that can step in at a moment's notice and play very, very good football. Let's stay on the offensive line here for a second. Let's talk a little bit about the center, Brian Allen. What was one of the key matchups that we talked about on the crossover pod with Locked on Bucks that I mentioned here on Locked on Rams last week? Brian Allen against Vita Vea. Right, The Rams, when they struggle offensively, it seems that the pressure comes from the middle of the line. Vita Vea is one of those guys that's going to be able to pressure your center and your guards. Brian Allen was, other than the snap that was a 30-yard loss, which we'll talk about at some point, I'm sure, he held his own. So you got two guys that were in tough matchups going into that game, kind of question mark matchups potentially. Both of them stood up incredibly well. Talk about Johnny Hecker, too, another guy that didn't have a good season. Johnny Hecker is a Pro Bowl punter who was, you know, as weird as it is to say, probably the Rams' best player for a period of time. Didn't have a good year. You know, he was in a, in a battle for his job during camp with Bajorquez. He wins the job, and he was mediocre, if we're being honest. He was terrific against Arizona. He boomed a couple against the Bucs. The Bucs had to do that short of the turnovers, right? You know, you turn it over, that's a whole nother story. But he knocked out a couple of punts that put them deep in their own end, made Tom Brady have to go 80 yards, 85 yards, 90 yards, 90 plus yards. And even Tom Brady's going to struggle with that. So an incredibly good job by Johnny Hecker in that game as well. These are the things that kind of go by the board. We're thinking about the long pass to Cooper Cup. We think about the field goal. We think about the fumbles. But these flips in field position can be incredibly important, especially in a game like that. And he had a huge role in it. So congratulations to him. How about this? We talked about Cooper Cup. We're going to talk about OBJ. Those guys are stars in this league. Cup's going to finish high in the MVP voting. OBJ is one of the more popular players in the entire NFL. I'm about Van Jefferson. Numbers, couple of catches, one rush, nice around the end. Those are fine. He, he's your third receiver. Those are about third receiver numbers. The Rams are pretty good at finding him a way to get the ball a handful of times during the game. You see some of the blocks that that guy get through? especially the one where he sealed the edge going around the left side. That's not something that your third wide receiver is going to do over and over and over again. And, and you know, I, I know he gets a lot of credit for a lot of different things, but watch how often do you see Cooper cup cut into the middle of the line and pick up a linebacker, pick up a secondary player that's coming down. I mean, th this is a, a star player by any measure. 
and the Rams wide receivers are throwing blocks like crazy. I get Van Jefferson, who has gotten better each year that he's been here. He's been a more important part of this offense each year that he's been here. But watching him play the way that he did in particular, the blocking, the route running, everything that he's done, very, very good job by him along the way. Kendall Blanton had four catches in his career going into that game. Caught the first touchdown of the game from Matthew Stafford. Who had that one coming? I, I, I get it. He's an NFL player. You got to be ready, et cetera, et cetera. Playoff game, first touchdown of the game to Kendall Blanton. Oh, okay, that's not the easy. I mean, the throw was on the money. It was wide open, everything that goes along with it. But, you know, if you're OBJ and that ball's coming, you know what to do. Cooper Cup, you know what to do. If you're throwing it to Cam Akers or Van Jefferson or Tyler Higby, they know what to do. Kendall Blanton? All right. He also caught a ball on the sidelines where he's probably the, the fifth target in that. He was there. He made the catch. Again, a touchdown, a catch that keeps the chains moving. Just these little things from guys that maybe you're not necessarily expecting that turned out to be absolutely fantastic along the way. And lastly, Brandon Powell in the return game. The Rams had nothing going in the return game for the vast majority of the season. All of a sudden, they find Brandon Powell. He has a touchdown late in the year. And now all of a sudden, the Rams have a little bit of run, a little bit of an opportunity to flip some field position, to get that 15, 20, 25-yard return that turns it into real yardage. And, and that is an incredibly beneficial thing to have. The Rams finally found it with Brandon Powell. Okay, coming up next, I want to talk about Rams fans and how you guys need to represent Sunday against the 49ers because we knew how it looked last time. But first, let's talk about Get Upside, right, Rams fans? It is an incredible app for anybody who buys gas. You need to know about this, right? My listeners, people here in Southern California in particular, they're earning cash back for every gallon of gas every time you fill up. Think about how often you're at that pump. Think about how often we're all at the pump here in LA. You need to download the free Get Upside app in the App Store or Google Play right now. Use the promo code TOUCHDOWN and you're going to get 25 cents per gallon or more for your first fill up. That's cash back. Don't pay full price at the pump anymore. It is so expensive. Do everything you can. Get your cash back using Get Upside. Just download that app for free and use the promo code TOUCHDOWN, 25 cents per gallon or more on your first tank. And some people who are using the app, they're saving as much as two or $300 a year in cash back. And there's no catch. Cash back gets right added to your account. You can cash out anytime you want, bank account, PayPal, however you want to do it. Get Upside is going to take care of you. You got to download the app though. It's free. Get Upside. Use the promo code TOUCHDOWN to get $0.25 cents per gallon or more cash back on your first tank. Don't forget the promo code TOUCHDOWN. Okay, so the million-dollar question going into Sunday at the NFC Championship game, SoFi Stadium, is who's the home team? Okay, I, I get it. I'm an L.A. native. I grew up in this town. I've lived the vast majority of my life in this town. And L.A. sports fans have a rep, Right that they show up late, that they leave early, that they're not as diehard as the next guy, that they don't care as much about this as people in other parts of the country do. I don't really buy it myself, but a couple of Sundays ago, three Sundays ago, week 18 against the San Francisco 49ers, it was hard to make an argument that the 49er faithful did not swing that game in San Francisco's favor. Look, SoFi Stadium is the most magnificent building that I've ever laid eyes on in my life. I've been to Jerry World. I've seen some of the newer, you know, when the Rams were at, uh, in Georgia to, to play the Super Bowl a few years ago. Got to see the Mercedes-Benz Dome. Really, really nice. Very, very cool. SoFi blows them all out of the water. So I understand that there are a lot of people that want to come and see it for the first time that maybe aren't Rams fans, that maybe just kind of want to see the next big shiny thing, and it's definitely worth it. But when you see what you saw in week 18, when the 49er fans not only outnumbered Rams fans, and I don't like saying it out loud, but it's true, they did. When you look at some of the numbers that say last time it was about 60% 49er fans, and now we're looking forward to some projections that says it could be as much as 65 or more 49er fans, what are you going to do? Are, are you going to try to get back some of your money? In other words, you know, my, my season ticket package costs X. I can sell off these games or two and cover the entire cost of it and go see some Rams football kind of on the house, right? Or at least offset some of the course. Or I want my Rams to win, and I need to put together a home field advantage that's going to help them do that. This is nothing that the Rams can do. This is nothing that Cooper Cup or Matthew Stafford or Sean McVay or Andrew Whitworth's wife or anybody of the people that are talking about, hey, make sure you don't sell your tickets. Make sure, okay, fine. It's up to you. How are you going to do it? 
do you want to be the fan base that has the other team outnumbering you? Do you want to be the fan base that's thinking economics first, team second? And look, I'm going to be honest with you. I get it. The tickets are expensive, right? That, that you're going into your pocket significantly to buy these tickets to go watch the Rams. I get it that there are a lot of people in Los Angeles who maybe are not Rams fans first. They're fans of other teams and they go to the Rams because they're the home team. I understand all of these things. It's going to take some time to develop a fan base the way that it was in the 60s, 70s, and 80s. They've gone for 22 years, right? When you leave for 22 years, you lose a generation of fans. It's going to take a little time to earn everybody back. It'll happen. This is how you do it. You go out there and you win a bunch of games. You put a product on the field that's extraordinary. You go to the Super Bowl. Maybe you win a Super Bowl. That's something that's in the, on the table here in the next couple of weeks. But you know what would help a lot? A bunch of blue jerseys in the stands. A bunch of people screaming, whose house? Rams house, right? Not every time that Matthew Stafford goes into the huddle, he's got to cover his ears. They got to go to a silent count. It's bad luck. I, I, I get it. I, this is my hometown. I understand. I, I was born in downtown Los I get it, right? This is how we roll. We are, we're cool. We're chill. You know, I know you, you guys care more about this than we do. All right. You want to go to the Super Bowl or not? And, and it's up to you. No one can make anyone else sell their tickets. And I understand how the negotiation goes. Hey, I'll buy those tickets for you. What are they face value? Let's make up a number. They're $150 a piece. I'll give you $550. No, man, go Rams. All right, how about uh, 1500 Nah, man, eh, go Rams. I don't know, how about 2500 All right, enjoy the game. I get how it goes. I get it. And you can take that money and you can turn it around and you buy season tickets again for next year. And you get to go watch, you know, nine games next year. That's a, the Rams schedule flips back the other way. I understand all of that. Don't you want to go to the Super Bowl? Don't you want to see the Rams at SoFi Stadium in their own building in the Super Bowl? You can't tell me that having a bunch of 49er fans in there isn't going to work against the Rams. Look, the first half, 49er fans were pretty quiet last time, right? 17 to nothing, Jimmy G's on the run, and it felt like everything was coming up Rams. I get all of that. But how often can you do it? How, how many different ways can you say, ah, this thing, you got you to put people there. Sell your tickets. I get it economically, but emotionally, come on, man. Let's turn that place blue. Let's make sure that everybody's fired up. Let's make sure that that place, that we at least got a puncher's chance when it comes to the fan thing. Because our football team's good enough, right? The Rams are good enough to beat the 49ers. Pretty sure about that. I'm going to keep telling myself that until I believe it 100%. I think that they are. But what will help a lot is if that place is rocking if it's not a 49er home game in Los Angeles. I get it. They were gone a long time. Now's the time to kind of get them back. Now's the time to say, you know what? I'll make money when the Steelers or the Cowboys or the Chiefs come to town during the regular season, not at the NFC Championship game. Hold on to those tickets. Make sure that you do it. Let me thank you again for making Locked on Rams your first listen every single day. Now make sure that your second listen is Locked on Bets, your daily one-stop shop for all your gambling needs. Locked on Bets, hosted by your boy Q with expert analysis and insight from Lee Sterling. It is free and it is available on all platforms. we got a crossover pod coming up on Thursday. But coming up tomorrow on Wednesday on Locked on Rams, I'm going to give you the one thing that they need to do and the one thing that they can't do going into the NFC Championship game. Until next time, I'm Travis Rogers. Find us everywhere you find your podcast. Whose house? It's Locked on Rams' house.